Airbnb is a partner to IGLT, Airbnb Experiences. And under the leadership of Clark Massett, who most of you know, uh, is based in Paris, with our global partners, um, we try to do much more um, in-depth type of global marketing collaboration. And this idea came out of the um, out of the head of um, one of our foundation board members, Maria Kuba, uh, who's on the call from San Francisco. And you know, she was looking for ways to help grow LGBT experiences on the uh, Airbnb experiences platform while also helping IGLTA members around the world, particularly, you know, smaller business members, because it's, you know, COVID has really affected, I mean, it's affected everyone, right? But for those of you that do walking tours or you do some sort of creative classes or, or something um, unique in your hotel or, or whatever, um, you know, that has basically come to a, a full stop. But there are people wanting to still explore the world, still see the pyramids of Egypt, for example, with Ramez on here. Um, and we really feel like this will continue after COVID because not everyone in the world can travel over to everywhere in the world. So the Airbnb experiences, I think is going to live on beyond the in-person once COVID ends. Um, so we have um, Molly uh, Babington, on the call with us today. She leads the Impact and Diversity Partnerships for Airbnb Experiences, and she's been wonderful to work with. She's already onboarded a few IGLTA members uh, onto their Experiences website, and um, she's gonna give you some background on what this is, how it would help your business, um, and then we'll you know open it up for Q&A, although you can always ask questions in the chat room on the right. But uh, Molly, I'd like to um, welcome you, welcome Maria, and um, I'll hand it over to you. So thank you. Wonderful. Thank you so much, John. And um, thanks to, to everyone for joining. I'm very excited to be going through this today. Um, I think I shared with some of you that were on early that in, pre in presenting, I won't be able to see all of your faces, but um, I'm there with you in spirit. And please put any questions into chat. We'll leave time for Q&A. Um, and you know, there's a decent amount of content, but a lot of it is focused on really what are online experiences or Airbnb experiences in general. Um, and then going through a number of examples that we've pulled from our recent Pride campaign, but also just general examples that we have on the platform today. And then we'll talk through next steps um, and how to get started and how this is relevant for this community. So before diving in, um, Kristen, are we all good on seeing my screen? Yes, we're good. Wonderful. Didn't want to buzz through. Um, yeah, so as John mentioned, just as an introduction, I'm on the social impact experiences team. I've been at Airbnb for about a year. Um, and social impact experiences focuses on primarily collaborating with nonprofits around the world and helping them leverage the experiences platform, whether it's gaining supporters, raising funds, um, and really just serving all, all of the diverse communities around the world. Um, so recently, um, as many of you may be aware, with the pandemic, we launched a product called Online Experiences. And this has really allowed us to kind of open up opportunities around the globe to run experiences virtually. Um, so as, as mentioned, we'll talk about really what are experiences, go through some examples, and then next steps. So just taking a step back, I think given the, the IGLTA community and, and the traveler community, we're probably very familiar with, with Airbnb as a brand. Um, but just to kind of level a little bit, obviously we started as a brand really focused on homes. Um, and the idea behind Airbnb is all about uh, belonging and creating a sense of belonging. And we feel that in order to create a sense of belonging, um, it involves human connection. And that started with connecting folks through their spaces and their homes with travelers around the world. Um, but more recently, that's evolved to connecting people through passions and through activities, which are experiences. So just to give you a sense of the numbers and kind of size of scope of Airbnb today, um, this is obviously constantly changing, but we have about 7 million Airbnb listings worldwide, um, over 100,000 cities, and over 220 countries that these listings um, sit within. So it's fun to see this global audience on the call today because certainly Airbnb is touching all different parts of the globe. 
And then in terms of experiences, it's a product that's been around for, I think, about four years, five years. Um, we have over 40,000 Airbnb experiences worldwide and growing. And certainly um, with the new online tool, this is um, creating access and growing fairly rapidly. So for those that aren't as familiar, what are Airbnb experiences? Um, as mentioned, these are really kind of one of a kind activities. They're focused on being led by locals who are you know, experts and kind of credible in their craft, um, really designed to create that sense of connection, that sense of intimacy. Experience actually came to us through our community. So folks were staying in Airbnb homes and asking their hosts, you know, what should I do locally? How should I, um, you know, engage with this community, or with this city? And so experiences really rose from that. But what's really fun is that the product or the, the experience is offering is completely separate of homes. So we also have folks that are taking experiences locally. I've taken a number of experiences in, in San Francisco where I'm based. Um, so it really reaches a large audience, both from you know, global travelers to domestic travelers to, to even locals down the street. And the focus is how do we connect someone that's you know, passionate and an expert in their craft um, with guests that are interested in in learning more. And it's been, uh, just to give you a sense of, of how people are feeling about experiences, it's been a really strong offering for us. Um, there's been a lot of traction. It's really allowing folks, again, to have that sense of connection with people that are passionate. It's allowing hosts to share their passions um, with those around the world. So our host base is, you know, all different types of, of individuals, whether it's they're doing an experience as kind of a side you know, project, or it could be their full time. Um, so it varies and really and really runs the gamut. So just to kind of narrow in a little bit, because I think when we hear the word experiences, it can mean a lot of different things. So what what really is an Airbnb experience, and what qualifies? There's kind of some key pillars that you're going to see me bring up quite a bit over this material um, that really are the themes that make up an Airbnb experience. So first and foremost, we've talked about it being led by an expert and having kind of credibility in their craft. Uh, secondly, we really want guests to feel like they're immersed and they can participate. Um, so rarely, and this is particularly important for online experiences that we'll be talking about, rarely do we want guests to feel like they're having kind of a passive, you know, sit back and watch experience. We really want them to be immersed in that activity. Um, third, we want them to, to feel like they have access to a special place or community, that kind of insider access. Um, and finally, you know, having a sense of storytelling, being able to, again, walk away feeling like they got to know their hosts, they got to know the other folks on the experience, um, and really learn something about that community or about that craft. So what doesn't qualify as an experience, just to... to um, narrow in a little bit, you know, you're not going to see kind of a, a big red bus tour, for example, on Airbnb, although those are, you know, wonderful ways to experience a city or community. Um, we we want to focus on that personalization and that sense of connection. So if it's an event that doesn't have a clear host um, or there really isn't someone kind of engaging you in that experience, it's not going to qualify for Airbnb. We also currently don't have any services, so things like transportation are not offered. And then finally, you're rarely going to see like large ticketed events or things that guests could find on their own or create on their own. Um, we really want it to have that uniqueness. So that's kind of on, overall um, Airbnb experiences. And um, a couple months back, given what's happening in the world, we did launch a new product called Online Experiences. And this took our offline model of human connection, intimacy, and just brought it into an online environment. So we've partnered with, with Zoom that's integrated on Airbnb, and we now have hundreds of experiences on the platform that are being led virtually. So not much different than our offline offering. These are live experiences, and they're designed, as you can see in this photo here, to be real-time interacting and engaging with your host. Um, there's typically around 10 people that are attending these experiences. So we've wanted to 
um, continue to keep that sense of intimacy by making the, the guest count capped at 10 people. Um, so you can ask questions, you can, um, in, in the photo you're seeing here, it's actually an experience held in Chernobyl. And this is called the Dogs of Chernobyl experience, um, where he actually walks around the Chernobyl power plant and feeds the dogs. Um, and you're live walking with him, seeing the dogs he's meeting with, asking questions about um, Chernobyl and, and the, the NGO that works with these dogs. Um, so that live engaging, kind of traveling through the computer, but sitting in, in the comfort of your home. So more recently, as many of you may be familiar, this is actually a, a photo on the right from the Stonewall Museum. Um, we did launch online experiences during our Pride campaign a few weeks back in collaboration um, with the IGLTA community. And so we just have a couple of experiences up now. And what we're going to talk about today is how you guys can get started and, and be involved um, if it's the right fit. So the two um, experiences that are live today, we'll go through some examples. First, as I mentioned, is the Stonewall Museum. And so this is, um, as many of you may be familiar with, in, in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Um, I actually had the opportunity of kind of going through a, a live preview of this experience before it launched. And Emery, our host here, actually walks you through the museum. He has what's key to these experiences is really kind of a beginning, a middle, and an end. So you have an opportunity to hear about the museum, learn about the history, focus in on a certain topic, actually walk through the museum and see um, a couple of really key um, items that they have and they have stories around. And then you have a short discussion at the end um, and able to really talk about um, you know, the significance of these archives and what it means um, to the larger LGBTQ community. You can see here just a screenshot of the experience. They're they're hosting this for ten dollars. Um, so pricing, you know, is a question that comes up a lot that we can talk about, but can really vary, and it's up to the host to choose um, the price. The second one that uh, we launched from the IGLTA community was with Aisha, who actually was already running Airbnb experiences offline, and so she converted her experience to an online experience where typically she does a bar crawl and kind of nightlife experience through London. And in this case is able to walk guests through virtually, you know, what is the culture and nightlife in London for the LGBTQ community? Um, she's extremely engaging and wonderful host. You can see she hosts this for, for $6 on Airbnb um, up, to, up to 10 guests. So you have that sense of intimacy. You really get to know Aisha. You learn about that culture and nightlife in London. Um, and the experience is about an hour. So just sharing some more examples, not all of these are, are from IGLTA, but wanted to share some more from Pride and then go and, and show some that are separate of the Pride campaign. Um, one of our most popular experiences that we actually launched with originally and has done extremely well, I've taken it a couple of times with family and friends, is our sangria and drag show. So this is an example. You saw Aisha's that you know converted from a tour to more of kind of an educational experience. This is actually taking what was originally an offline show and bringing it into a virtual experience. And so the key is you don't want guests to kind of sit back and be passively watching. So they've done a great job in this experience of converting their show where you're actually making sangria together. Um, but you're also, you know, they encourage you to go to your closet and put on an outfit and come back. And so there's this level of interaction that they've been able to create within the show um, to make it engaging, to make it feel like you're really walking away connected, um, but you've still enjoyed this, this drag show. And this is out of Lisbon, Portugal. Moving along and also wanted to just kind of demonstrate the representation across all different countries and continents that um, we have with online experiences and offline. So here um, we have uh, actually co-hosts, so two individuals that have teamed up together to host the secrets behind Lady Boys in Thailand. And this is somewhat educational, but you're also, you know, putting on outfits and um, doing some interaction. I haven't yet taken this one myself, but I've heard some really great feedback. Um, and here you're learning a lot about the transgender culture in Thailand. Um, you're getting this kind of behind the scenes insider scoop. Um, while also having that that intimacy of asking questions and being able to really engage with these hosts. 
So those are a couple from our Pride campaign, but I wanted to highlight, and you know, I've mentioned that it doesn't have to be specific to LGBTQ. Obviously here we have tons of experiences on the platform and with IGLTA community, we encourage all different types of experiences. So whether it's related to something you're currently doing in the travel industry, or it's simply a personal passion or interest, um, we encourage it all. What I wanted to kind of share the spread of different types of experiences we've had. So for example, in Mexico, a popular one is um, Mexican street tacos with a pro chef. So cooking is a really positive and, or I should say popular category for us. We have a ton of different cooking experiences. The second that you're seeing here is a true or false funny historical game. Um, gaming has actually become more popular and started to kind of um, spring up over the last couple of weeks. So this is a host in Greece that takes you through um, learning about the history of Greece, but also playing an interactive true or false game. We have coffee makers or um, propagating plants. Um, so Hilton Carter here in the U.S. is um, an expert in how to kind of grow plants within your home. So that's a really interactive and engaging experience where people show up with their plants. And then lastly, you're seeing the secrets of mobile photo behind a Nat Geo winner. Um, so a photographer who has that expertise, but he's able to kind of create something intimate to educate the guests. So what you'll see when you go on to um, Airbnb is we have a lot of different experiences organized by categories. So your cooking categories, um, you know, your, your arts and culture categories, your crafting, your, your history, your tours. So um, we like to think about the types of experiences in these different categories. So I know this is a lot of content, but moving into how to get started, is this relevant for you? And then um, wanna open it up for questions. So just at a basic level, some of the, the key reasons that our hosts are attracted to hosting on Airbnb, you know, initially it's around earning money. It's a great way to kind of build your brand, connect with folks and also um, earn, earn revenue. Secondly, um, being able to share a passion, which we've talked about. And we really find that the experiences that do best on the platform are those where the hosts have that kind of extra connection and passion to what they're, what they're sharing. And then third, being able to expand your community. You know, as we can see on the, the call today, um, the online environment really invites this global audience. So I think even more so than our offline, you get this opportunity to connect globally um, doing something that you love. So we've mentioned some of these, but these are kind of four pillars that we define as our quality standards. And you know, I've linked off to some more materials here. And um, as part of the IGLTA collaboration, we're here to kind of help after this webinar as well um, to talk about these quality standards, but just highlighting them, the expertise we've discussed, connection is huge, um, providing access and then participation. So we talked about those in the beginning, but these are really integral to an Airbnb experience. And then in terms of what the actual outline is, we kind of, we speak of it around like run of show, but the average experience online is about an hour. Um, and we really look for, we do actually a live preview before it gets, gets live onto Airbnb. And we really look for um, the beginning, the middle and an end. We like to encourage hosts to cultivate a sense of connection right off the bat, particularly with online. We really need to lean into the introductions and the icebreakers, um, setting expectations with your guests. You know, what are they going to get out of the hour? How should they anticipate kind of participating? Um, and then finally, figuring out unique ways to get folks hands on um, um, before doing a closing. And I, I think I've now been on a number of these experiences and you do start to see the differences between having that kind of run of show that we recommend versus those where you're sitting there as a guest kind of trying to figure out where the experience is headed or what really you're going to be doing. Um, so Airbnb and the team is here to help hosts kind of iterate on their different formats um, so they can arrive to this, uh, this kind of crystallized run of show. So in terms of the process, um, 
it's it's actually fairly straightforward, which again has been really exciting to make it accessible for um, a global audience. But first, you you would design your experience and submit it. So we'll share all of the links and and obviously materials to get started. But um, that design process is really about thinking, you know, what should my experience be made up of? What should that run of show look like? How am I going to engage um, and encourage participation with my guests? What can they walk away with? Um, and then there's a, a submission process. So it, you know, it's not it's not an application, but it's you're filling you're kind of filling in the blanks for the experience that you're then submitting, and we're reviewing that before it goes into the live review. And the live review is an opportunity to actually run your experience live um, through Airbnb, but it's internally with Airbnb employees. Um, we have panelists that are doing. Um, kind of sharing best practices and helping really craft and narrow in on the um, on the live review experience. And then third, obviously, once it goes live, which you saw with the Stonewall Museum and Aisha's, it's actually on the host. They have kind of full control over adding dates and availability onto Airbnb. When do you want to host? How often do you want to host? You'll then be messaging with guests through the Airbnb app. So at that point, everything is really um, handed over to, to the host to control and to engage and interact and kind of run your, your business essentially through, um, through Airbnb and your experience. And then finally, as many of you are probably familiar with kind of the review process, but reviews are really, really key to Airbnb and being set up for success. So um, learning and understanding how to continue to get high reviews and engage with your audience is a lot of what we've talked about today is what leads to really strong reviews. Um, but that's where you start to see the experience continue to kind of break through the noise on Airbnb. And we'll have many materials on on um, kind of detailing this process as well that I've linked off to. So let's say you're you're sitting there hearing this, you're like, wow, this is really a good fit for me. Um, I'd love to get started. We'll we'll share the link afterwards. It's also here. You can Google, you know, online experiences. But the key with this community is that we ask that you put um, initially as you submit your experience IGLTA in the title. So you'll see as you're going through that submission process that there's a there's a point that you can submit a title. And we ask that you put IGLTA. Um, it helps us track it and track the partnership. Um, and then we'll be able to, to change that and edit it before it goes live. If you do have outstanding questions as you're going through this process, though, we really want to be here to help the community. So um, there's an email here. Jot it down. We'll send the deck, um, but social impact at airbnb.com, which you'll reach uh, most likely myself on the other side of that email um, for me to help kind of walk through this process and make sure you're feeling um, set up for success. So a lot of information. I'm sure there's a bunch of questions. Um